One very wonderful uh, feature of the Krishna conscious philosophy is that the function of the living entity is established. In other religions, mundane religions, and even in the non-Vaishnava Vedanta, which is Vedic, but which is impersonal, there may be some idea of soul. Actually, in non-Vedic religions, although they speak of the soul, that conception is actually material. Like the, there are many kinds of Christians who actually think that the body is the self, and the body is the soul, this is their philosophy. And they say that when Jesus comes on the judgment day, then the graves will open and the bodies will come out, the Christians. And anyway, so this is highly materialistic. At least in the uh, Advaita Vedanta, or Mayavari philosophy, the soul is understood to be non-material, eternal, not the body. But of course, that philosophy has its own problems. They take a humble me to mean I am God. And that God is inactive. For the Mayavaris, the soul is completely passive, has no function, it simply exists. But in Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, the uh, soul, Jivera, Sorupai Nityera Krishna Das, is explained to be eternally the servant of Krishna. <coughs> so the soul is therefore dynamic, spiritually dynamic. But as was mentioned this morning at the end of uh, the Bhagavatam class, when these souls fall into the material nature, they become covered by most profound ignorance. And in that state of ignorance, the soul is asleep and therefore inactive. Of course, when we say inactive, activity is there in the sense that the soul is always, always vibrating with spiritual energy. And a, therefore, a perverted reflection of activity manifests in the form of uh, this body and its engagement in sense gratification. But from the transcendental point of view, the soul is inactive. Nishkriya is not doing anything, not doing anything of value. So, just like a car, an automobile is designed with a function. Now, an automobile can have a problem in the motor and become inactive. Let's say the battery goes dead. So that is uh, an apt comparison the situation of the soul in the material world. It's like a car with a battery gone dead. It's there. 
and the potential of function of its proper function is there. But it has been rendered inoperative. So if you're standing on the side of the road and your battery has gone dead, you can't start the motor of your car, then one thing you do is you wave down another car. And if that person happens to have, or you have, happen to have battery cables, then you can connect his battery from his running car to your battery, which is dead, and you can start your motor. And once the motor is running, then that will charge the battery, your car is, you just keep the motor running and the battery will charge up again, the car will be in good working order. So this initiation is like that. When we receive the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra from the spiritual master, we are getting the battery cables attached to our heart. The charge is coming in. This is actually the meaning of the diksha. There's nama diksha and there's mantra diksha, two kinds of diksha, first initiation and second initiation. So mantra means the Gayatri mantra. Nama means the holy name. So both are diksha. Diksha, Srila Jiva Goswami defines, as we find <laughs> translated in Srila Prabhupada's purport. Diksha means the transmission of spiritual knowledge. So that is what is going on here. Spiritual knowledge, chit-shakti. Uh, this uh, permits us to engage in our function. By knowledge, we, then we know what to do. Why are we inactive? Because of ignorance. The Abhidya Shakti, the Achit Shakti of Krishna has covered us. Uh, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Avatam Jnanameti, Jnaninas Nityavari. Uh, the soul is the Jnani by his real nature. He's the knower. Uh, and he's, by that knowledge, he has his spiritual function. That knowledge means he. He knows Krishna because he's part and parcel of Krishna. And his function is to serve Krishna. But avritam jnana that knowledge has been now covered. So that knowledge therefore manifests through the material elements in a perverted way and similarly his function is perverted as Krishna explains. That, uh, what is that? Arvatam jnana metana jnaninas nichevayanam Kama Rupena Kamatiya, the Shpuranana image. His activities are simply lusty. The Shpuranana And this last is being, in the previous verse, Krishna said, it's Ditya Vairana, eternal enemy of the soul. So it is burning him like fire. The senses, which are actually the extensions of the soul, because we have a spiritual body. But the senses in the material world are on fire, burning with lust. And just like a person when he's on fire, what does he do? He's just jumping around like a mad. So in this material world, we're just jumping around, like mad people, engaging in uh, senseless. Although we have senses, our activities are senseless, because we don't know what is the proper function of the senses. And getting more and more entangled, more and more implicated in the uh, samsara chakra, the wheel of birth and death. <clears throat> so this process is stopped by this transmission of knowledge. The function of the soul is restarted. So Srila Prabhupada always said this initiation is not the end. It's just like, again, this jump starting, it's called jump starting of a car. That's the beginning. Your motor is running. Now, you put the car in gear, you uh, use the car as it is supposed to be used. So initiation means beginning. In the very early days, I think one of the first initiations Srila Prabhupada gave, I was told by uh, Satsarupa Maharaj that one of the, these early initiates, from the first or second initiation, just after he received his name and beats, the devotee saw him putting on a backpack, and they asked him, 
<laughs> Prabhu, where are you going? He said, oh, now that I'm initiated, I think I'm going to take a vacation in Greece. <laughs> that was the last day I ever saw him. So it's not that we take this initiation to be, oh, now I've made it. Now, I say, I'm a resident of the spiritual world, so I can do whatever I like. I'll go to Greece. Or anywhere else in the world. No, it's the beginning. Now this good soul uh, has been awakened. Now it should act properly. And for how to act, we have to go on hearing from this spiritual master, from the revealed scriptures, uh, from the great acharyas, sadhus, saintly persons. We take uh, spiritual knowledge from them and apply it and advance in our spiritual life until uh, this, there's this ninefold ninefold stages. This stage is the third bhajana kriya in which we take initiation. It begins with shraddha, some faith must be there. Then sadhu sangha, association with devotees, just like when we enter the temple, become bhakta, bhakti. And then this stage, bhajana kriya, means now we are vowing to follow the regulative principles and keep our senses always engaged in devotional service under the direction of the spiritual master. And then from this uh, comes anartha nivriti. Then the ignorance that is lying uh, potentially in the heart, because that ignorance it is like uh, it's like the um, skin of an onion. You know, there's many, 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 many layers. The more you peel, the more stinky it gets. <laughs> the ignorance is many, many layered. So, uh, the propensity for sinful activity has to be eradicated by steady practice, sadhana. So this is what you are vowing to do. And no matter what the mind says, once we've taken this initiation, then the rascal mind may come along and try to persuade us to engage in sinful activities again. But we must remember that before the deity, before the Vaishnavas, before the fire, and certainly before the spiritual master, we have taken this solemn vow that we will follow four regular principles for the rest of our life every day. Chant 16 rounds, 25 rounds on Ekadasi. Uh, and otherwise, always keep our senses and mind engaged in Krishna's service. So then this brings about by this steady practice, anartana ritual. Then the, even the very tendency for sinful activity is eradicated. And then one comes to nishta, a steady platform. And then very quickly, when one has achieved nishta, steadiness in Krishna consciousness, then ruchi follows. Then we actually begin to experience the sweetness. We read about the sweetness of Krishna's holy name. So that is tasted after one has attained nishta. And then by this sweetness, one becomes very attached. Asakti, very attached to chanting and hearing, very attached to come and see the deity, uh, to hear about Krishna, and to perform devotional service. And then from this attachment, bhava means, bhava means ecstasy. And after becoming established in ecstasy, it's only a small step to frame the love of God. Actually, bhava is the liberated platform already. But it is generally said that while having a material body, the advanced devotees then they are on a platform called bhava bhakti. And after they give the body up, then they attain prema bhakti in the spiritual world. But both are actually liberated. So, um, anyway, this is brief what we're doing here today. And uh, since everything is so late, I cannot extend this talk. So, what should I do now? Should I? Oh.
in the 20th chapter of 5th canto says that the sun god enters this universe and by his effulgence he divides the universe into two regions, the regions of light and the region of darkness. So uh, a preacher, a uh, Sankirtan devotee, uh, is also Martanda because by his preaching he sheds light and this light is accepted by some and rejected by others. So there are always those who come to the light and those, Prabhupada says, like owls who flee from the light. So in this way, we heard this also this morning, the presence of the preacher is always divisive. By his presence, before everyone was in ignorance, but because he gives light, then there are those who become devotees and those who are known as demons. So we're requesting you to be like that, Martanda. Hello! Marcus, and then after Marcus is Patrick. Amara Prabhu. Hello. Amara Prabhu is one of the thousand names of Lord Vishnu. Amara means immortal, Prabhu means Lord, so Lord Vishnu is the Lord of the Immortals.
pounds. So, your name is Pavitra Vani Das. Vani means the pure message. Pavitra means pure, Vani means message. So the pure message comes down Sri Guru Prampura and you are the servant of the pure message. Next is Radek. And then Vachlav.
So your name is Krishna Vali Devi Das. <laughs> There are two forms of Tulsi Devi, Brahma Tulsi and Krishna Tulsi. So Krishna Tulsi has dark leaves, so therefore she is known as Krishna Vali. Vali means leaves, so you are the servant of dark leaved Tulsi Devi.